September was the month when my dividends went absolutely bananas. I've been dividend investing for over 14 years. I started in 2009 with a lump sum of £5,000. I lived fairly frugally and drip fed any spare money I had left over each month into mainly large cap dividend paying companies such as these. I reinvested the dividends back in to allow them to compound over time. It's the stream of dividends which I find incredibly motivating, especially when you see it accelerate and feed on itself over time. You see at the end of the day I'm not after a super yacht or even a Lambo and I can't eat more than three meals a day. Passive income simply gives you options in life. My ultimate aim would be to generate more passive income than my actual wages. And believe me, I have a very ordinary job in the education sector. Now, dividend investing might be suboptimal for the investing purists, but I don't mind because I'm enjoying every step of the way. If I was a growth investor, I would have given up years ago and would have probably squandered the money instead. Before we start, I'm going to step into my time machine and go back to 2009, the year it all started. In the September of that year, I received absolutely nothing. In the following September, I received £45 from Barclays. And in the September of 2011, I received payments from Barclays, AstraZeneca, an LED lighting company called Dialite, and BP. The total payments were £190. It was so motivating to see these totals increase. I just had to continue to see where the journey would take me. Let's return to 2023 to see where we are today. This is not investment advice and I'm just showing you my own journey. Share prices can fall as well as rise. On the 1st of September, I received a cash payment from Bluefield Solar Income Fund. This company specializes in making money from sunlight. The shares are down 13.5% this year, however. The yield is 7.1% spread over four payments a year. Dividends have been growing in recent years. This month, Bluefield Solar Income Fund paid out a total of £60. You see, by owning shares in dividend-paying companies, you own a small part of the business, and therefore, when they make a profit, some of that profit is paid to you in cash to do whatever you want with. On the 11th of September, it was the turn of AstraZeneca to reward its shareholders. The shares are down 3.4% this year and the yield is fairly low at 2.1%. Dividends are showing a gradual upward trend. This month, AstraZeneca paid out a total of £170. If you want to see how much I hold in each company, then I've listed the totals in the video description. On the 12th of September, I received a present from Lloyd's Banking Group. The shares are down a touch on the year, but the dividend is a decent 5.6%, spread over two payments a year. Dividend history is rather patchy, however, and the banking sector can be a bit volatile. This month, Lloyd's Banking Group paid out a total of £165. On the 15th, it was the turn of Barclays to pay their shareholders. The share price has fallen this year by 5% and this also matches their current dividend yield. And just like Lloyd's, the dividend history is a bit patchy. Barclays was the first share I bought all those years ago and this month I received a total of £215. If you find these videos useful then please hit that like button as it really helps out the channel. On the 18th, I received some cash from Shell. The shares have done well this year, up nearly 10%. They pay a yield of 4%, spread over 4 payments a year. This month, Shell paid out a total of £330. On the 21st of September, it was the turn of HSBC to reward its shareholders. It's been a terrific year so far for the bank, up 21%. Dividend yield is high at 5.5%. As you would expect in the banking sector, the dividends are a bit volatile. But despite this, HSBC paid out a total of £140. Also on the 21st was Rio Tinto. This mining giant has had a tough year, down 11.8%. The yield is fairly high at 6.3% spread over two payments. This month, Rio paid out a total of £225. The third company to pay out on the 21st was SSE. The shares are more or less unchanged this year. The dividend is a very decent 5.7%. Dividend growth has been encouraging over the long term. This month, SSE paid out a huge dividend of £515. You can start your own dividend journey today with a really cost-effective platform called Trading212. If you sign up using the link in the video description, then we could both get a free share worth up to £100. 
On the 22nd, I received a payment from BP. The shares are up nearly 9% this year, and BP is another one of those companies which pay out four times a year. Just like banking, oil is a volatile sector and dividends can fluctuate from time to time. This month, BP paid out a total of £320. On the 27th, I received some dividends from an S&P 500 ETF. This one has the ticker code IUSA and is up over 11% this year. It pays out quarterly and gives you exposure to the 500 largest listed companies in the US. This month, IUSA paid out a total of £80. Also on the 27th was another ETF, VHYL. This one gives me exposure to nearly 2,000 large to mid-cap companies from around the world, which pay higher dividends. This month, VHYL paid out a total of £70. My third ETF to pay out on the 27th was the FTSE 100 tracker. The price is more or less unchanged this year and the yield is 4% spread over 4 payments. This ETF gives me exposure to the complete FTSE 100 index. In months when I can't seem to find any individual bargains, I often add more to this one. This month my FTSE 100 ETF paid out a total of £240. On the 29th it was a turn of Imperial Brands to pay out. The shares are down nearly 17% this year. Dividend is 8.2% spread over 4 payments. The dividend has grown over the long term, but has remained stable for the last few years. This month, Imperial Brands paid out a total of £100. Also on the 29th, I received a present from the Renewables Infrastructure Group. This company turns wind and sunlight into money. The shares have not had a good year, however, down nearly 15%. The yield is 6.4% spread over four payments a year. Dividends have been fairly stable over the last few years. This month I received a total of £45. And now for premium bonds. The yield is around 4.65%. There is one draw a month. You have easy access to your money and there is a chance to win a million each month. All winnings are tax free. This September I managed to win two £50 prizes and three £100 prizes, making a total premium bond win of £400. The bar on the left shows how much I would expect to win from premium bonds so far this year with average luck, and the bar on the right shows what I've actually won in the first nine months of the year. It's been a great year so far, but it doesn't mean that every year will be as good. I use premium bonds as my emergency fund so I hopefully never have to sell my shares and can allow them to compound over time. And now for the overall summary. The green bars on this graph show my passive income for the first nine months of last year and the blue bars are for this year. The total passive income for this September was £3,075. Last year I received just over £12,000 for the first nine months, but this year I've reached over £14,000 and this graph shows my average dividend monthly totals year by year since I started my journey in 2009. All the dividends I receive go back into the market. I put every pound straight back to work. At the time of this video, I'm receiving an average of exactly £1,200 a month. And this doesn't include premium bonds. This is purely dividends. And because I make good use of a stocks and shares ISA, all my dividends are tax free. My next target is to reach an average of £1,300 a month. Each £100 increment should take a shorter time to reach because of the effect of compounding. Now a quick look at the FTSE 100 ex-dividend dates for the month ahead. Here are the published ex-dividend dates at the time of this video. If you own the shares before the ex-dividend date, then you are entitled to the dividend, which will be paid to you on the payment date. As an example, I own shares in BAE Systems, which go ex-div on the 19th of October. I'll be entitled to 11.5 pence for every share held, and this will be paid to me on the 30th of November. And here are all the payment dates for October. I'll be receiving dividends from Croda, Aviva, GSK and Diageo. And now for the highest yields, with Phoenix Group leading the way at 9.8%. With very high yields, there is always a risk of a dividend cut, and if this happens, the price tends to fall as investors become worried. This happened to Barrett Developments recently, and the house builders have had a tough time this year. The average yield of the FTSE 100 is around 3.7%. There have been no purchases or sales this month, but I plan to do plenty of buying in October. Why not subscribe to find out what shares I'll be buying? 
It takes a long time for compounding to work its magic. I didn't receive big dividends to begin with. In fact, my very first target was to achieve enough passive income to afford just one cup of tea a day. So to see how my journey started, then click this video here.